This is an iPhone 6S Plus that has some damage to the charge port connector on the board. So what we're going to do is remove this and replace it with a new one. So I've got this in my board holder and I actually like this one. I did have to sand it down a little bit because it doesn't fit perfectly right out of the box. But once you do that, these are very convenient. They're made to be model specific. I'll put links to this and the equipment used for this repair in the video description. All right, let's get it started. First thing I'm going to do is lay some Kapton tape down over the battery connector. That is my main concern here is not melting that in the process. I've got a shield that came off the back of I think it's an iPhone 5 or an iPhone 5S and that kind of fits nicely over that area so we'll tape this down as well so that it stays in place and from here we're going to add some hot air so I like to heat up the board just a bit in advance and then I will add some flux on here and I think it's real really debatable as to whether this is helpful or not it certainly can't hurt anything but we're not really concerned with oxidation here so I'm not convinced that putting flux on at this point makes a difference but again better safe than sorry so uh, from here, I'm going to add a slightly higher temperature hot air with a little more airflow on this. And fortunately, we're right next to the edge of the board, so there's not too many things you have to worry about damaging as long as you don't let the heat get to that battery connector or anything above this area. So what we're going to do is just continue to heat this up. You'll see it took probably about 40, 45 seconds or so, and, and I probably could have got this off a little faster with a little more airflow but for all practical purposes this will get the job done we're just waiting to see the solder turn silver and when it does we'll start feeling around on the connector and once it starts to move freely on both ends we can go ahead and just slide it off towards the bottom all right so that's clear and from here i'm going to add some leaded solder this is probably another questionable step we could most likely take our wick and just go over the go over the uh, the uh, connectors at this point and clean it up but just to make things easier I always like to mix in a bit of lead and from here we'll put a tiny bit more flux on here because that stuff does tend to boil away as you work with it grab our wick and we'll clean off not just the connectors themselves but on the left and right hand side where we have the points that actually anchor the connector to the board Alright, so that's looking pretty decent at this point. I'll take some rubbing alcohol and a swab and just kind of clean this up so we can get a better look at it. We'll speed up the video a bit. And you can see that's looking pretty decent. And if we lift up our shield and peel back the tape, you can see also that the battery connector did not get melted. And that was my main concern because if that did get damaged that would be one more thing that we have to replace now from here I'm going to add some fresh flux onto our clean surface and then we'll get some leaded solder onto all of these pads and you'll notice here at some point that on the far left and far right hand side I got a little more solder than I really intended to so for the most part if you have the right amount on your iron the surface tension and flux will kind of take care of that, but it is possible to carry too much solder over on here. You can see I've got a big glob up there in the top right hand corner. So as we clean this up again so that we can get a better view, we'll go ahead and take care of that in just a second. All right, so I'm going to put some more flux on here and we should be able to carry this away just with the iron so if we clean the, the leftover solder that was on the iron off so that it's nice and clean it should attract some of this excess now if you wanted to of course you could always go in with the wick and you know kind of play with it until you get just the right amount but I'm looking for not too little not too much but you know when we go over this with the hot air it's going to kind of even things out we just want to make sure that we don't have an excess we can always add more on here but having big clumps of solder can cause some problems so I'm just kind of dragging that excess away at this point 
All right, so we'll clean it up with the rubbing alcohol one more time. And that's looking a little better than it was before. Get some more flux onto the surface, and this is going to not only allow us to solder this down, but also kind of assist in holding things in place. Now, you probably want to hit this with some hot air first to activate it. That tends to make it a little more sticky. But, of course, if you heat it too much, then you're going to boil away the stuff that is going to facilitate these surfaces bonding together. So there's kind of a happy medium there. And once we've got that down, we're going to somewhat align this thing as close as we can get it to where we want it to be. And we want it to be evenly spaced on both sides because after I finish up here, I am going to go in with a soldering iron and touch up all of these connectors. Uh, some people like to do this just with hot air, you know, stick it down and leave it as is. My concern, of course, is making sure that these have contact with the board uh, with the connectors on the board and that if anybody comes later on and unplugs this and people tend to grab it right in the middle of the connector when they unplug them they're going to put some stress on that connector so we want to make sure that it's reinforced and it's going to stay on i'm tacking down the edges here just to kind of keep it into place so that when we use the hot air it won't go floating around and from here we're just going to kind of heat this thing up evenly until we see the solder turn silver again and then you'll see that I got uh, my hand slipped a bit and I kind of knocked it out of position and the good thing is that if you get to the point where you know when you've got just enough heat to make the solder melt and not too much to where you're going to cause any damage you can kind of maintain a constant temperature here and move this thing back into position so just give it a little tap there make sure everything's kind of lined up and we should be good to go there. Now, like I said, some people leave it as is and they're just going to, uh, you know, plug the phone in and go from here after they clean it up. But I like to kind of put a little pressure down on the metal edges of this thing so that we know that everything sits nice and flush all the way across. Next thing I do is take my tweezers and check all of these and see if any of them are loose and need uh, you know specific attention but beyond that I am going to go over this with the iron add a little bit of flux and touch these up by hand because I like to have that tiny little bit of extra solder on the outside just in case now, like I said there's not really a lot of wear and tear on this connector once it's installed and it's plugged in you wouldn't expect anyone to have to unplug it for a very long time because lightning ports tend to last quite a while so it'll probably be six months or at least a year maybe before this thing gets unplugged again. But just to be safe, I'm going to touch these up and add that extra bit of solder on there to kind of hold them. Now when we get to this side, of course, which is close to that black tarry stuff, you won't have very much room to work with it. So you're going to need an iron that can get down in between that tiny little space. It looks pretty big under the microscope, but it's actually very small, and we don't want to burn that black stuff away. I mean, if we do, it's not a big deal, but there are components underneath there. And of course, if we burn the connector and start melting it, that's going to cause some problems. Once we got these all touched up, we'll take some rubbing alcohol, and I like to use the hot air at the same time, set it at a lower temperature. It's about 150 right now, and we'll just go over this with either a swab or a brush until we see all that flux is cleaned out and there's nothing underneath there. Another alternative, of course, is that you can put the lower end of the board into an ultrasonic cleaner, but if you do so, you want to make sure that it's 100% dry before you plug anything in. If you found the video helpful, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and check out our weekly Tech Talk live stream. Have a great one and thanks for watching.